Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Monday the 9th of November. My name is Paul Lavender. I'm the pastor of Unpleasant Baptist Church. It's really good to be with you today. I trust that you are well. It's uh, foggy and misty here in Northampton today and it has been over much of the weekend. But I trust that wherever you are, you're safe and well. And uh, I look forward to spending this next week or so with you going through uh, the book of Micah in daily prayer as we read God's words together. But first, let's bow our heads and remember that wherever we are and whatever we've been doing already today, uh, God's mindful of us and with us now as we pray. So let's bow our heads together. Psalm 108. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre, I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is higher than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Give victory with your right hand, and answer me, so that those whom you love may be rescued. God has promised in his sanctuary, with exultation I will divide up Shechem and portion out the vale of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah is my scepter, Moab is my washbasin, on Edom I hurl my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go out, O God, with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for human help is worthless. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Thanks be to God for his word. Now let's pray together. Father in heaven, You've given us a mind to know you, a will to serve you, and a heart to love you. Be with us today in all that we do, so that your light may shine out in our lives, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant us rest, Lord, from all sinful deeds and thoughts, and to surrender ourselves wholly to you, and keep our souls still before you like a still lake, so that the beams of your grace may be mirrored therein and kindle in our hearts the glow of faith and love and prayer. Through such stillness and hope, may we find strength and gladness in you, O God, now and for ever. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today we begin a new series of readings over the next couple of weeks from the book of Micah in the Old Testament. And today we read chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth in the king, day of kings Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, O you peoples, all of you, listen, O earth, and all that is in it, and let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For lo, the Lord is coming out of his place, and he will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. Then the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will burst open, like wax near the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. All this is for the transgression of Jacob, and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria a heap in the open country, a place for planting vineyards, 
I will pour down her stones into the valley and uncover her foundations. All her images shall be beaten to pieces, all her wages shall be burned with fire, and all her idols I will lay waste. For as the wages of a prostitute she gathered them, and as the wages of a prostitute they shall again be used. Thanks be to God for his word. So the prophet Micah. Sometimes we know passages later in the book, but I trust that you'll get an appreciation for the whole of this uh, prophetic writing as we think about it. Now Micah, the name Micah, means who is like Yahweh, who is like God. And lives. he lived in a village, Morasheth, which is about 25, 30 kilometres from Jerusalem. And in his book here, in his writings, in his prophecy, he tells the people that the things that they have done wrong in the past, and the way that they are currently abandoning God, will have consequences. There's judgment that's coming, prayers will be unanswered, and they will find themselves uh, far from God and ignorant of his ways and his will. Now, Micah, like many of the Old Testament prophets, will use imagery of sheep and shepherds to drive home his message. What's his main message? Well, certainly today, the message is, is that our relationship with God, our communion with God is clouded and our relationship with other people is impaired when God's righteous judgment for the things we do wrong comes upon us. In other words, it's Newton's law, isn't it? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There is a consequence to what we do. And that's true for us as individuals, and it's true for us as nations. And so Micah, as he prophesies, as he interprets the times, as he looks forward, he can see the trouble is a coming. Why? Because the people have forgotten God. And may this be an encouragement to us, not to a message of doom and gloom, but to recover our relationship with God and to work for a society where justice is upheld, because that will be an important part of Micah's message, where the poor and the oppressed are lifted out of their situation and given all help that can be reasonably offered. They are supported and encouraged and justice and righteousness are known throughout the land, but not in a condemnatory or condescending way, but as part of the very worship of God that's integral to the life of God's people. Micah will tell the people that if they don't put their relationships right, both with God and with other people, God won't be interested in what they have to do when they come into the holy place. That's an important reminder for you and me too. Let's confess our faith and we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So now let's pray together and bring to the Lord our concerns this day. Let's pray. Firstly, a prayer from Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Make us worthy, Lords, to serve our brothers and sisters throughout the world who live and die in poverty and hunger. Give them through our hands this day their daily bread, and by our understanding, love, 
give peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray today for uh, the children of the world. As we conclude our week's focus on children in part of the world where Christians are persecuted, we pray for organisations who provide practical, spiritual and educational support. Lord, we ask you that through these organisations, children will receive care and encouragement that they may need that in time they may become faithful and mature followers of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for Uganda. And we pray today for the, the work there, uh, particularly in Gulu. And it's uh, the work there led by BMS World Missions worker Linda Darby. We ask for God's help with child protection work and ministry in schools. We pray, Father, that you will support this work and may it be a sign of your caring compassion for people of all ages and backgrounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves. We pray for those who we know and love and various situations that weigh on upon our mind today in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Perfect in us, O Lord, whatever is lacking in your gifts. Increase our faith establish our hope, enkindle our love, and make us fear nothing except to fear anything more than you, our Father, our Saviour, and our Lord. Let the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. Keep you safe. Please continue to remember all the regulations that are in place across our country. Um, please pray for the people of Wales as they come out of their uh, time of lockdown, that God will guide them and that uh, we may continue to enjoy safety and that the situation with regards to coronavirus here in England may improve. Till we meet again tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.